to. All right. So welcome everyone to our Wednesday presentation, uh, self-care as professional development. Um, so obviously I'm, my name is Kelly Williamson, community manager, SUNY CPD, located in Syracuse. And I will have a co-host Eileen Angelini uh, from Empire State College today as well. Um, if you have followed the CPD for a while, especially during um, the pandemic, which is still happening. Unfortunately, um, we're still in the middle of this. We will, um, we have focused on self care uh, throughout the, um, the course of that, right? Um, not so much on some of this personal things, the things that I'm going to delve into today, but these are super important. And you might have received an email from us um, that included some of these tips and tools, maybe around December, maybe February of this year. Um, and we just want to reintroduce this to you. So if you've seen this presentation before or parts of this presentation before, thanks for, for being such a fan of ours. But also, I hope that you will take the opportunity to really um, to share this resource. So we've been putting together professional development weeks for a few years, and it's essentially an awareness campaign that highlights the important lifelong learning connection, growth, and transformative organizational success. Your organization and you as a department and you as a person, you're all connected, right? That's why we had this image here at the bottom, academic, technical, leadership, and personal. You really have to work on each part to be able to have a real holistic, um, you know, impactful change in either your workplace, um, you, you know, a personal goal, those things all intersect. We just don't think about it all the time. Same thing with, um, I like to use this example of project management. Many of us are project managers, but we don't use that title, right? We, uh, we manage things, we get things done, we host events, we, we tie projects up and end events and move on to the next without really putting a title on that. So I think it's important to call out those sections of development um, to really have a nice whole pie. Um, so we've already started, so you're already muted. Surprise. Um, if you're on the phone, which many of you probably are not, um, just a reminder not to put us on hold. Um, we will be recording this and making it available via YouTube. So um, there's no, if you leave, you'll still get to see this. And we also have older playlists of professional development um, opportunities available there as well. So definitely take a look at that um, to see uh, what we've done in past years. We've done some really fun um, discussion topics and also um, we've been able to have some great prolific speakers share some information with us. Um, that being said, we welcome your comments and your questions at any time. So just put it in the chat bar. Lisa and Jen are here as well. Eileen is here or will be here. And myself will be monitoring that. Um, depending on the question, we might stop where we are and go forward, um, or we might just leave it till the end. Um, I guess it really depends on what's what's coming out. Um, so again, a reminder, my name is Kelly. I'm here, we'll be having Eileen, the second half presentation. Um, her part's probably gonna be really more interesting, but I'll try um, to, to make it happen. Uh, and, and just a note, when we first did, uh, Lisa and I had presented for CEA and Y, Continuing Education Association of New York, uh, we did this topic, um, I think it I think it was February of this year and we really wanted to talk about investing in loving yourself and and I don't mean that in a creepy way but um you know really taking the time to invest and to protect yourself as an individual um you're many things right your parents siblings children teammates um bosses uh you know I could go on and on scout leader co-workers, neighbors, um, but we really are ourselves too, right? So not only can focusing on self-care be healthy, but it can make us be more in tune to our authentic self. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and we have some fun things in here too, to get your mind wandering. Um, but we'd really love to hear what you've been doing, especially since 2020, um, to keep yourself grounded and any tips you have for colleagues across the SUNY system and beyond uh, are really appreciated. Um, we know that sometimes it's easier to focus on someone else than ourselves, right? So um, hopefully this won't be too deep for you, but I do appreciate it if you do share some reflections afterwards as well. Um, 
This is a graphic that came from Lori Fox. Thank you, Lori. Um, this week on Monday, where she spoke about building a great culture with COVID-19 as part of it and, and what she changed in her department and across the campus and what she's been hearing from individuals. So this was used, um, collected using Mentimeter, which is has a free basic um, subscription. So if this is something you'd like to do to take a pulse of your colleagues, your campus, um, welcome to it. I think it was like two free slides and five free quiz questions. And I'm not sure if that was per month, but um, take a look at it. So essentially she shared a link and people uh, told her what their work culture was like. So we had 61 people actually share. So obviously there were a lot of overlap um, but these words obviously stick out. My favorite is seeing fun right in the middle. Um, it's like a party crasher here, like, woo, fun in, in the midst of some not so fun words, right? So, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this because that was another presentation, but I think it's important to look at these words and internalize some of them as we go through the presentation itself. Um, and I, I won't go too fast in some areas, but I also want to make sure that you get the most out of this, this hour presentation. So my first question to you is, uh, do you self-validate? And um, you don't have to tell me like personally, um, but you can share in the, in the chat at any time. But you know, what is the definition of self-validation and what can it be? So you know, we're going to have a few slides on self-validation because I think it's important to talk about yourself as we go through this whole presentation. So if you're, you're, you see a topic and you're like, oh, I should do that. And there's a voice inside your head saying like, oh, you know, maybe not. Um, you can call up the self-validation uh, reminder in your head. So, you know, what is it? Treating yourself with kindness, prioritizing your needs, noticing and accepting your feelings. That's huge, I think. And also accepting limitations, flaws, and mistakes. So that is um, something that some of us might not be great at and some of us might be too good at, right? Um, and it's also acknowledging your strengths in your progress and your effort. You know, sometimes it's just about making an effort and documenting in your head or maybe on paper if you journal what that effort is. Um, yeah, so... And it's hard, right? Sometimes it's easier if it's like, oh, good, I, I put my laundry away. Woohoo, woohoo, yay, self validation. But it's not always that, right? So I found these from Sharon, um, who I referenced on the, the previous slide, some, some steps for validating yourself. And the first one is really to notice how you feel and what you need. Um, and there's an example, right? Because sometimes we hear that and we're like, yeah, 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 I do that. But um, do we say it to ourselves? The second one is obviously accepting these needs without judgment. So that's why I was saying, like, if you see a slide that's coming up and it says something about starting a winter garden, like, you owe it to yourself to be like, don't judge me. Maybe I do want to start this winter garden <laughs> um, and trying your best, right? Um, don't over identify with your feelings, accept them for what they are. And they also don't define us, you know, one moment in time of how you're feeling shouldn't like lead the way for the rest of your day or your life, right? These feelings are temporary. So they come and go and they shouldn't define us. The last step is to practice and to be intentional about practicing. It's super hard um, sometimes, especially when it's a, a topic that we're not comfortable with because it prevents, you know, presents conflict or brings up an emotion that we're not comfortable with. Um, so I have this practice and you don't have to say this out loud, but you can, again, just saying you can share if that's what you're comfortable with, but it's not anonymous here. So I completely understand. Um, choose your own self-validation adventure. Say this to yourselves. Think of an example of something that you're working with or you're dealing with or something in the past maybe and give yourself some validation. Um, you know, in your head, write it down, maybe put it as an email um, to yourself or a reminder on your calendar, uh, especially if it's one of the positive ones, right? Um, but you, your feelings are valid. And even I have self-doubt when I put this presentation together of will people appreciate it, right? So it's, it's something to work through um, and it's, it's e evolving. And, and if you do journal, it's great to actually be able to probably read back where you've been and where you are now. And see like, wow, I never thought I'd be here. I think we can all say that at least for you know one or two uh, instances in the past two years. 
And part of that self-validation is allowing yourself to be mindful and intentional. Um, and, and we do have programming around this, um, but really mindfulness is allowing us to be present in important conversations, right? Um, you can have like what I would call an out of body uh, experience <laughs> to see yourself uh, in another light. Um, but there's also some tools that can go along to help you be more mindful and intentional. And I have the links for these at the end of the presentation and I'll put them in the chat when Eileen takes over. But essentially, um, there's a lot of free simple meditation uh, tools out there. There's also some articles that can help you get started, uh, especially if this isn't something you've ever delved into. Uh, I recommend Insight Timer for some guided uh, segments. Uh, they have time limits on them and you can you know, pick and choose what your goal is at the end. Um, so, so definitely try to facilitate uh, some sort of internal investigation once or twice. And the next is practicing gratitude. Uh, I think a lot of us say thank you a lot. Uh, I've worked in trying to say I appreciate you or I appreciate that you did this into a lot of my emails because I think that calling it out like that is a very important. And it's not something that happens all the time, right? Um, so I think it's great to be able to provide that sort of validation to someone else, just as important as it is for yourself. Um, and we need to be able to express that. So we had shared an article, um, and I think I put it in the links, but if not, I'll check, uh, from the Baird group in one of our emails about expressing gratitude and recognition as the end game in the office. Uh, if you're a leader, or you want to be a leader or you're a supervisor, you can actually build a lot of engagement out of recognition, proper recognition. And you can see, obviously we've shown, you have to be aware of how people like to receive appreciation. So that's a great question for an icebreaker or um, some sort of staff development day. How do you like to receive appreciation? It's almost like, what is your love language, right? Um, but it's a it's not as off-putting if you ask that um, to some individuals. Um, but you see in 2016 that there was an analysis done that only one in three workers in the U.S. strongly agreed they received recognition or praise for doing good work in a week. That was 2016. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> that feels like a lifetime ago. Um, and imagine what it's like now. If that was five years ago, what environment are we in now? So I think it's really important to be able to be intentional, give yourself validation, but also practicing gratitude externally as well as internally. Um, and again, what does this mean to you? How do you like to be um, congratulated or recognized? So now we're gonna, those were sort of our deep topics, right? So I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this because these are resources and activities and things for you to think about that sort of augment the deeper self actualization part of the presentation. And then when you're doing your yoga, you can think about it and it's, you know, it's a whole meal, right? Um, so it's really important that we stretch and Eileen will talk more about that, but it's also important that we take care of our hands. Um, we type a lot, right? We're using our phone. I've gotten to the point, I don't know if it's my age or I'm tired, but um, I don't even want to text people. <laughs> so I use a uh, voice to text and that goes uh, terribly wrong sometimes. Um, but, you know, a lot of it might have to do with my hands. I'm just like tired of typing and using that, you know, that muscle memory. So I do have an exercise and if you want to do it, um, you know, follow along. And again, this will be available for you to draw back. Um, yeah, Lori says she picks with the phone. I honestly think sometimes in this day and age, if we want to get things done, um, the best thing you can do is call someone up and catch them off guard. <laughs> right? And actually have them answer the phone because they're not expecting it. They're expecting an email. Um, but anyway, stretch your fingers as far apart as you can and then relax them and stretch them again. You can stretch your thumb if you want by pulling it back as far as you can, holding and releasing. Obviously, I could say we're not a doc. We're not doctors here. If you have had some issues with your hands, please proceed with caution um, or just share this with someone else. Um, you can do a wrist flexor stretch, um, basically sending your arm in front of you, palm up, bending your wrist and pointing down towards the floor. Um, that one I'm actually doing right now and it, it kind of is, is feeling good. So I must need the stretching. Um, and then with your other hand, you can bend your wrist until you feel a moderate stretch and then hold 
15 to 30 seconds. Um, or you can keep doing this during the whole presentation. Um, and then you should start doing a wrist extensor stretch, which basically repeats the steps below, but begin with your hand, the palm side down. So you're getting a full workout with your hands. And, and obviously with all of these tips, you can uh, search for other opportunities. And um, one thing I used to do when I taught first year experience on a campus was I would have my students uh, do some self massaging as a way to relax as a way for them to be more in tune with their body. And it only took like two minutes, right. Um, so for two or three minutes of your day, I think it's important that you definitely stretch out your fingers. Um, and also, I, I think I put this in the comments, take a look at your setup and make sure it's ergonomically um, beneficial for you as well. Some of your campuses might actually have offices of ergonomics that can help you uh, assess your, your working environment as well. So take a look around and see if that can help you with um, maybe like it's your back or something else. Um, so about being a leader and having people report to you or, or being part of a larger ecosystem is you need to be able to speak to someone too, right? So Project Hope is New York's free anonymous COVID-19 emotional support helpline. It's been around uh, for a while um, and it's staffed seven days a week uh, from eight to 10, but there's also after hours assistance. This is a way for you to call up at any time and speak to someone about your frustrations, what's going on, um, completely anonymous. Uh, I would also recommend sharing this link. It, it is, a lot of it is position to, to deal with COVID specifically, but anytime we can talk to someone and it's free, I think, um, you know, you might have some colleagues or employees that are afraid because they don't want to, you know, go through the rigmarole of finding someone, use their insurance, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a nice, quick, easy way uh, to access a tool of support. Um, and then, you know, here's another opportunity. If you're not only already aware, um, it's less heavy than calling and talking to a support line, but it's about investing in yourself. Um, SUNY faculty, staff, um, employees have access to Coursera, right? Some of the courses are free and some of them are paid, but I would take a look. Um, you can register. I have the link that I'll be sharing at any time and uh, see what works for you. There might be a, a short course on something that you've always wanted to, to learn about, but you never really knew um, where to find it. Right. Or it was you didn't you only wanted a taste of it. So this is an opportunity for you to really um, take a look around and see if there's something that speaks to you that will give you um, more confidence or validate something. Uh, this is my favorite. I actually do this sometimes when I'm at home and I have to clean. Um, there's, there's a lot of evidence that talks about musical choices dictating our moods and productivity levels. So, um, you know, Jamie Heron and our staff had turned us on to Super Mario soundtracks as a way to increase productivity. And I honestly think it works. I put it on my TV, on the YouTube app, and I just let it play. There's an hour long one that I, I have a link for that I'll share with you. And it, it does change sometimes, but it's not as repetitive to make you crazy, but that something about that upbeat music makes me feel um, more invigorated, more motivated. So um, definitely try that out or see what music like works to you. Um, Kurt says that he listens to, to music while exercising. Yeah, to help give you that extra push. Maybe it gives you a, a, a you know, a sort of like infusion of excitement, right, that you need to get through the work um, day or the workout. Uh, so definitely take a look and think about that. Oh, Christmas music. So true. If you enjoy Christmas music as a way to uplift you, definitely pop your favorite song into the chat um, so others can, can um, be you know, in the know, right? Um, I'm Mariah Carey, obviously. <laughs> That's like the number one for me. Um, if you've never gardened before and you need to tend to your garden um, and you're thinking about doing something different, you can start exploring winter gardening. Now, obviously, like we need our vitamin D right now. We need our, our vitamin D lights, like those lights that, you know, are supposed to be our mood enhancers, but you can start your seedlings inside. Um, and I think that that act of free planning and focus on, on something outside but of work, but seeing it grow and, and planning ahead can really give you um, some, some, you know, new dimensions in your work-life balance, but also um, something that might bear fruit, right? I have a neighbor that has a lemon tree. Oh my God, that seems really complicated. 
Um, all right, Melissa, Melissa does winter garden. It does help a lot. It, it takes your focus. So I have a link to how to start that. Um, you could start small, have a succulent. If that lives, congratulations, move on to sunflowers in the fall. Um, here's another free tool you might not be aware of. Um, well, New York State Every Day is a, a work-life service through Goer, um, which basically is dedicated to, to empowering New York State employees and their families. So not only does it send a tip every day um, that can be emailed to you, but they also have monthly challenges that you can participate in. Um, so the website is chock full of different information. They have positive affirmations this month. I took the screenshot earlier today, so you can take a look at that. Oh, good, Rob. Yeah. See, Rob's doing his own re scientific research with his gardening on what works and what doesn't. Um, if you exercise at home and you don't have a bike or you know something else, you might want to consider uh, unique spaces like your kitchen, especially if you're fully remote or you have um, colleagues that are still fully remote um, or a hybrid, but they feel they feel isolated. This might be fun. I have an article on this that I share. Yes, that woman's using a cast iron pan. Um, it's sort of similar to eating. So they talk about picky toddlers in eating and, and my son is a toddler and they say if you switch up the location of where they're eating, they might eat the food that they're refusing. It's true. If I take him out of his high chair and put him in the living room with like a piece of chicken or something that he was like, no, no, I don't want to eat or a piece of asparagus on the kitchen counter, he ate it. I was shocked how easy that was. So we really want to switch up our mind game from time to time. Oops. Puzzles, puzzles at the CPD. They love their puzzles. Um, <laughs> I usually don't participate, but sometimes I do. So if you're not a puzzle lover, um, but you're feeling like you need an escape, definitely take a look at puzzles. Not only can they help provide a rush of dopamine for reward and reinforcement, but there is um, you know, studies that are being done that um, talks about puzzles as a way to stave off cognitive decline, but also that your brain pattern changes as you do a puzzle. <laughs> There's the CPD puzzles. <laughs> the puzzle lobby is out in full force. Um, so if you wanna come by and do a puzzle with us, just let us know in advance and we'll roll out the red carpet for you. <laughs> um, something else you might think about doing is keeping a happy file and also using it to self-validate. So if you have emails, special emails, handwritten thank you notes, I know that Lori sends handwritten thank you notes. I usually send handwritten thank you notes. Um, collect them. Like if you present at conferences, have all your badges on display. Have a spot, like a happy spot, a shrine to yourself somewhere, um, but also save these. Print these off so that you can look through them and read through them if you're having an off day. Not only does this help you know, instill the confidence and remind you of where you've been in your professional life, but you also can use it during your promotional and tenure, uh, you know, time frame in your life, or you might use it to motivate you to like reinvigorate your resume, your LinkedIn, do something different. Like if you are like, oh my God, so many people have thanked me for my help in this part of my job, but I really don't focus on that. It might lead you down a path of further, um, you know, internal uh, evaluation into something. Maybe you want to make a change or create a new program. Um, something that's born out of positivity, I think, has a lot um, better chance of surviving in your everyday, you know, activities. Uh, especially if you have this information to back up. So definitely keep a happy file. I actually have. Well, I used to have this a uh, previous position where I had a, a thanks and praise folder, <laughs> and anytime someone would send me a nice email, I would put it in there so I could go back and look at it. But also, you might have to call upon those people sometime in your life, um, you know, to kind of support you or to give feedback on a topic that was important. Um, you know, life is long and we've been in these positions. So I don't know if you want to tell me how long you've been in your current position or how long you've been on your campus. But, you know, on Monday and, and throughout this, we know people have been there 20 years, 15 years. Sometimes one time it was this person's first semester. Oh, could you imagine like first semester on a campus during the pandemic? Congratulations. Oh, good. Pamela has a file. Congratulations. 26 years, 15 years, um, 11 years. So yeah. So I mean, if you keep that file, like a 15 year file of all this stuff, 25 years, you know, the history of the internet. Now you have <laughs> at your hands. Um, it's really 
it's, and then thank you for participating. I should say that too. It's, it's not always that we get, get folks participating at this rate. So I really appreciate that. Um, so these are my reference sites. You don't have to do anything with this right now because I'm actually, when I turn it over to Eileen in, in just a few minutes, I'm going to copy and paste most of these in the chat. But also when you get this PowerPoint, you'll have them too. So there's no need for you to scurry around um, unless you really want to check something out. Uh, most of these are just a quick, easy Google. Um, but I, I just want to make sure that I have my Eileen stuff teed up. I was able to make you the co-host, Eileen, and I let me see if I can if I have to unmute you or not. where are you I can unmute myself oh good there you are Phew. it's a lot of people on here um so so I'm going to introduce you first uh and keep putting stuff in the chat because I'll be looking at it um when Eileen starts starts her part actually out. when I start doing the yoga I don't really want them in the chat because otherwise then they're not okay. getting into their their yoga that's mindset. true I'll be able to t call on them and say like you're not being present right now like Jen Snyder, um, a good point. So hold off on the chat, but we'll be here. Um, so so thank you so much, Eileen, for agreeing to do this. And I, I had told them that we had done this before um, with CEA and Y, and it was so great. And I think people got a rush out of it um, and a good motivational kick for the rest of the day. Uh, I do have a shortened bio of Eileen's up, but I did want to, to tell you all the things that she does at Empire State. Um, outside of obviously being I would assume a cheerleader right for the for the institution um, right. and doing presentations like this for us so she is um and let me know if this is outdated now but she provides direct supervision to the school's faculty in business management and leadership education and graduate liberal arts and sciences she helps in the development with new degree and certificate programs which is always so exciting she provides oversight of faculty recruitment professional development and reviews she collaborates with deans and faculties on um, the faculty members on academic program review and accreditation and she also works with academic division chairs and faculty on policies and processes to ensure course quality, which is so very important. And she obviously always participates with all of her stakeholders on the strategic initiatives and budget planning um, that goes on throughout the year. Um, she has been part of, well, I don't know if you're still on this, the SUNY Empire Presidential Task Force to enhance... Yes. Yes. All right. Good. She's part of the task force to enhance diversity, equity, inclusion on campuses. And most importantly, she has a credible husband, a beautiful daughter and two adorable cats. <laughs> um, so I did grab this from our last presentation. Um, we're going to talk. She's Eileen's going to take us through, remind us of the movements and stretching are important. So um, Eileen, if you want to start just explaining to folks what they should be getting set up, I will start turning some stuff off here. Okay, and I'm also going to say that I have I'm gonna turn my screen on. Yep. Hey, Carolyn, great to see he's have you on that on the message here. I'm gonna turn my camera on. Um, I have to give you all a quick heads up. I have the generator serviceman who was supposed to come between eight and four today. And he came just at 12 o'clock. And I think he's just about finished. and He's going to ring my bell. So in the middle of this, we'll get started with the, the exercises. I'm sure the bell's gonna ring and I'll have to step aside. So just so you know, I will disappear for a couple of minutes if that happens. That's okay. I don't know exactly when that's gonna happen, but any case. Um, a good lesson in being flexible. Yes, if, <laughs> um, it would help me if you could turn your cameras on because the big thing about stretching is correct position. There, I want to make sure that you all stay safe. Um, and sometimes it's just a little thing, like we're, if we start with our arms up, the elbows should be above your heart and not down here. So I can just make a general thing. Everybody bring your arms up. So let's start with some big deep breathing. So you're gonna breathe in. And you wanna stretch your arms up as high as you can, shoulders by your earlobes. So that way you lengthen and strengthen your spine. So while you're staying up here and strength, notice that my arms are tight to my head so I can get a longer spine stretch. This creates room between the vertebrae, allowing the disc to breathe. The disc is the one part of your body that you do not want to be skinny. You want it to be nice and plump. And we're gonna stretch out again, exhale. 
And as you're breathing in, you wanna think belly button to your spine. And the reason we want those discs to stay nice and healthy, like a little balloon that's fully inflated is because it prevents bone rubbing against bone. And once those discs get flattened, you can't get them plump again. And then it continues to be bone rubbing against bone. And as we're doing our, our motions, I want you to stay with me. I will assign speeding tickets, so stay with me. Big breath in. You want to do slow, 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 slowly. Because the slower you do an exercise, and really focus on this, focus on your breathing. Hands touch and exhale. The slower you do an exercise, the harder it is for your muscles. The harder it is for your muscles, the stronger they become. The stronger your muscles are, the more effective they are at burning calories when you do all types of activities. Okay, so big breath in. And what we're going to do now is we're going to bring our hands down to heart center, keeping your elbows above your heart. You're going to focus on your fingertips. And you're going to exhale, bring your hands out. Keep. Can you see me all? Can you? Okay. And then you're going to breathe in. So your fingertips are pointing towards your chest. We're going to do three more. So there we go. Really focus on your fingertips, all the negative energy, stress, anything that's keeping your muscles tight. We're gonna press out through your hands so your hands are pressing against one another. Good, slow and steady. We're not rushing. This is our time today where you don't have to rush and check emails, answer phone calls, sprint down the hallway to talk to somebody. This is your quality time for you. So you don't have any of those outside distractions, that quiet time. And okay, pressing those hands together, we're gonna shoot up again. Great job, and exhale. Now we're gonna keep our hands here. We're gonna do a little bit of a challenging exercise. Okay, so elbows are up. We're going to breathe in. You're going to touch your elbows together in front of your lips. And then exhale. Breathe in. Remember I said slow and steady. Really work those muscles. And I teach this class once a week for SUNY Empire Connects. And Everybody always says, oh, it doesn't look like they're doing much. And then they take the classes like, ooh, so here's the big thing. Because we're slowly working muscles. And I'm working muscles that you might normally not stretch on a daily basis. Make sure you drink plenty of water today because your muscles will feel it in the next 24 hours. And your muscles, the best way to keep them from cramping is hydrating because the muscles are filled with fluid. Okay. The other thing I forgot to say to start out the presentation, I'm going to turn this down for just one second so you can see. Make sure you're 68 inches from the back of your chair so you're sitting up straight and you're not slouching this way. Okay, sorry about that. I forgot to say that. This is a big group today. So, and do ask questions. Feel free to unmute yourself and say, hey, Eileen, I'm feeling this, am I okay? Do not suffer in silence. You should feel mild. You feeling those shoulders a little bit right now? Yes? Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling those shoulders. Good, thank you, Rob, because otherwise I can make this harder if you're not feeling it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I'm turning sideways, you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together and exhale. We're gonna do seven more of those. So it's like 40, Four to six inches back, squeeze those shoulder blades and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze, and I'm gonna turn this way so I can see you again. Squeeze, good. Make sure your head is aligned directly above your spine. 
Think of yourself as a marionette right now. Now, after this one, we're gonna really start to have some fun. Okay, you might wanna back up a little bit from your desk. Okay, so you can see, you're gonna to touch your shoulders. Fully extend, and when you're extending, you're stretching out your fingers. So we're multitasking our muscles. You're really stretching those fingers because we have them cramped up over a keyboard all day long. So stretch out and in. Stay with me. Stretching out and in. Good. Four more. People are moving. My hands are out there. Okay. Okay, good. B deep breaths in, belly button to your spine. Don't rush this. Normally my speeding tickets are you come help clean my daughter's room. That slows down to everybody right away. I have a college age daughter. Actually, her room is clean right now, so you'd have it really easy. But when she was in high school, it wasn't pretty. So I used to joke about that. I said, you don't have to clean it. You just have to sit there in the room and make sure she cleans it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> all right, we're going to do pulses. Your palms are out flat. I'll slide this way so you can see what I mean by a pulse. Uh... We're going to do this. And I see a question, but hold on. What do you, why do you breathe belly button to the spine? Is it the opposite? Is it, wait a minute, let me check that question. Whoever asked it, uh, it's the opposite of diaphragm. Okay. The reason I'm asking you to belly, visualize your belly button kissing your spine, and we're going to do the pulses. Let me do the pulses first. Here we go. Three reps of eight. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, un, deux. Toi, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Palms down. We're going to do triceps now. Belly button to the spine is a visualization. So that way you elongate and lengthen your spine and you don't slouch. Stay with me. Good stuff. At the end of triceps, we're going to do the same thing. We will take a water break after this before we do some hand work, which tends to be everybody's favorite, myself included. And good. Here we go. Tiny pulses. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Good job. Water bake and do some nice, gentle shoulder rolls. Thank you, Rodney. Rodney says he's got to run. So nice, gentle shoulder rolls. I got to set this up. Joe, I'll have to call you back. I'm in the middle of a presentation, okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a presentation. I'll have to call you back, okay? Shoulder Life is rolls. interesting. Life is interesting. Yes. Right. Just keep going. <laughs> Just keep going, just keep going. And here I thought I was going to be interrupted by the generator guy. All oh, right, of course. We're just going to listen to that music of my telephone and take it forward. I did prick a nice ringtone, didn't I? Yeah, I think it's good. This is actually the ringer on our phones at, in our office. All right. 
I gotta stick it down there so you don't hear it as much. Okay, we're gonna do some finger work. You have over 27 muscles in each hand. We are the carpal tunnel generation. So sitting up straight, remember 68 inches from the back of your chair. What I want you to do is I want you to bring the thumb to the base of each finger and you're gonna round that thumb. So it's almost like you can put glasses on. Just don't go straight down. I really want you to round your thumb as you're bringing it to the base of each finger. It was Joey and Giello, Carolyn. Do you know Joe? Okay. He's the chair of the Graduate Liberal Arts Studies Division at SUNY Empire. We're in the middle of doing a search for our new program in applied analytics. All right. Now we're gonna do fingers to the tip of the thumb. Once again, really round it like you're making an okay sign, really giving each finger a stretch. Okay, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can kind of see how I'm like a little bit down from the tip of the thumb. So that way I'm really rounding it. Now, if this, you feel any funny pings, you can do this by submerging your hands in warm water. I used to teach an American Arthritis Association class at the YMCA in the pool. And the pool had to be at least 80 degrees. So that way people with arthritis and I was leading them through the exercise. Let's just say 80 degrees is a really warm pool. Okay. So you can do this when you're in the pool, you can do it when you're in the tub, you can also do it when you're washing dishes and you submerge your hands in warm water. Okay. Now for the tricky part, your hands are out straight. What you're gonna do is one, focus on one finger at a time. Don't move your wrists either way. You're gonna do tiny circles with each finger, one finger at a time. Don't move any other finger, really focus on those fingers. We're doing the ring finger now. And middle, slow and steady. Now I am known to do this when I'm watching television at night during the commercials. Give yourself a little time. My daughter always says to me, mom, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm focusing on my fingers. Especially if you've had a long day of typing at the computer. We're gonna do it one more time. Do everything twice. First time to see, hey, what is she asking us to do? Second time to really feel that stretch. Now, if you're really, really good, you can do this with your toes as well. Uh, Kim is smiling with me. It's like, thank you, Kim. I will say this much. I can do my big toe and my second toe. I can't do the other three toes. That's about as far as I can get, but I know people that I've worked with at the YMCA that can do all five toes. That's really focused. All right, let's just play the piano for a little bit. Stretch out those fingers and underneath. It's a different feel than above. You're stretching the muscles differently. And then one hand above and one below, like a spider on a mirror or a windowsill. And then flip it over. And one more time this way. And one more time that way. Okay, we're now gonna do what I call Nemofin. So your wrist to your knuckles is Nemo's body. Knuckles to your fingertips is Nemo's fin. I just want the fin to move. If the entire Fish moves like this, he's gonna to sink to the bottom of the ocean. Elbows are above your heart. And I am fairly flexible. I had nine years of piano lessons, okay? I just want you to move from the knuckles forward. So you're not doing this, because that's the whole body, just from the knuckles forward. Good. Can you feel the stretch in your fingers? Good, a few more. So 
slow and steady. Good. Come in once. Big breath in. And exhale. Okay, I'd like to do a little bit of network, neck work, networking. Yeah, we're gonna network and we're gonna do some neck work. Okay, so do a little bit of network and then I'm gonna finish with some hand massages. The big thing about your neck is you never wanna do a 360 roll of your neck. And the reason being is if you do a 360, you're compressing the vertebrae between the disc. It feels good at first, but as you continue to compress that vertebrae, as you know, like, cause you're doing a 360 like this, you're compressing the vertebrae and then you're gonna have permanent bone rubbing against bone and then you're never gonna get rid of that neck pain, okay? So you're gonna bring your ear down to your shoulder, come straight back up, ear down to the opposite shoulder, Straight back up. Here we go. Down so you should feel that stretch on the side of your neck. Straight back up. Two more. And good. Okay, so we're gonna deepen the stretch even further. Okay, so remember, I'm gonna turn my camera down so you can see it. I'm about 68 inches from the back of my chair. That's my pillow. I want you to grab onto the back of your chair. Okay, so that way you're extending the stretch. Can you? Can everybody see what I'm doing here? Where I'm grabbing onto the back of the chair. Okay. All right. So let me demonstrate one first before you all join me. Okay. So I'm holding the back of my chair. So I'm getting a deeper stretch here, bringing the ear down to my shoulder. And then I'm turning my nose towards my neck, bringing the nose back up, head back up. Okay, here we go. Ear down to the shoulder, turn your nose towards your shoulder. And you'll hear those little crunchy bits because you're really deepening that stretch of the neck muscles near your ear. And right back up. Ear down. Two more to each side. Remember, so this is a better way of really stretching everything in your neck without endangering the disc of your cervical vertebrae. And the last one. And good. All right. Any water break? Any questions about that before we do the next exercise? Everybody good? Okay. Okay, so once again, I'm pushing back so I don't hit my head against my desk. You're gonna take a big breath in, bring the elbows past your ears, come down and then stretch your hands behind you like you're diving off a diving board and see, don't go further than this. See how my, can you see my fingertips? Okay, and you're looking down, good. So we're okay, big breath in. Thumbs to your shoulders, bring the elbows up. Come down, stretch the hands behind you, wiggle your fingers so I can see them. Big breath in, elbows up. Keeping those elbows tight to the sides of your ears so you lengthen and strengthen that spine. And you will feel when you do this, when you're bringing those elbows up, that your lumbar vertebrae kind of like, oh, wow. 
the lumbar vertebrae or your lower back. And those are the ones when you slouch at a computer all day, really feel it. Breathe in, elbows up. And release, we got four more. Fingers are up. And good, elbows up. Slow, controlled motions. And release, hands up. And bring those elbows forward, palms to your shoulders, elbows up. And good. One more, and then we're going to have a little bit of fun. And if you take enough classes with me, you know a little bit of fun means, oh, she's extending the stretch, and it's going to be a little bit harder. Okay, I'm going to stay, take a look at me for a second. Everybody, heads up. We're going to do pulses from this position, tight pulses where you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, your palms are facing the ceiling. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, muy bien. And coming up, water break, and then we'll finish with some hand massages. This is great. Thank you, whoever said that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's Kelly. If, <laughs> so out of all your exercises, think about this, or stretches. Um, what's the number one thing that people should do if they only have time for one or two? The next stretch. Okay, great. The next stretch, really, because we're hunched over the computer so much. You, and, and if you force yourself to sit up straight while you're doing it, you're helping all your vertebrae. Right, it looks like Maggie had a question. Are you rounding your back or keeping it straight? I would assume for the last... For the divers the last one my my back was straight on that one okay, okay. maggie if that doesn't answer feel free i think you can um, oh. okay yeah and feel free to unmute okay what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little self hand massage you're going to take your thumb and your pointer finger and you're going to go up really each individual finger so we're going up to the pinky come back down go back up the ring finger Come back down. This is really key, especially with the, the mouse hand, because you do so much clicking with the right hand or if you're left handed like I am. And really, when you're going up and down, if you hit a spot that's tender, then you know, like, oh, I got to be a little extra nice to myself here. Get into what we call the meat between or the wing between the thumb and the rest of the hand. All right, and really get the, the meat of your hand. Sorry, my generator guy is still out there. He keeps turning it on and off. So I'm a little bit like, oh, please tell me this is okay. Okay, and then we're gonna work our way up your forearm. Give a little love to the elbow because tennis elbow up to the, up the arm, get to the shoulder and you know, to give a couple extra squeezes right here on those muscles between your shoulder and your neck, and then come back down. And then we go up the thumb, do the wing, pointer finger, come back down. All right. I know that Carolyn and Kelly know this, but yes, I did do this on a Southwest Airlines flight. We were sitting on the runway for a couple hours and I was just like, okay, they don't, okay, we're gonna switch to the other hand. They don't let you get up anymore. And it was close to four hours, but it was about hour two of it. I started doing stretches because I had my book and it's funny, 
a paperback book works so well on a plane nowadays because if you bring an electronic device and you're sitting on a runway, they don't necessarily let you turn on your electronic devices. So the people next to me were getting irritated because I was just like, okay, I'll just keep reading. And I started doing some exercises and you know how Southwest has those fun flight attendants like, okay, everybody follow the woman in 4B. And I had quite a bit of the air, the flight doing these stretches with me, especially where I do things up like this so they could see me. And I was asked, did they give you anything? And I said, yes, they did. They gave me a deck of cards and a Coca-Cola pen. And other people have said, they should have given you more than that because you kept the whole plane from, revolt from revolting. But it was fun. I had fun. That's, that's the key thing. I had fun. Oh, there he is. I'll be right back. Keep doing your fingers. I'll be right back. Keep doing your fingers. I'm watching. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a few minutes left. I'm sure Eileen will wrap when she comes back. But as a reminder, we are still recording. So um, your photos, won't, your images won't be in there. But um, definitely feel free to share this with other individuals, um, you know, especially this part. Um, but um, yeah, we have to go. Don't worry. Um, we'll be sending this out as well as the slides. Um, I do have all of the um, links that I'll try to put in the chat. I Hopefully it doesn't look like a mismatch when I copy and paste them. So let's just hope on that. Um, and then we hope to be able to see everybody. Oh, I can just put a file. Oh, look at this. Hold on a second. The more you know. Okay. So what I have, am doing is I'm actually uploading a file. Uh, maybe not. I lied. That's bizarre. Um, all right, I'll just copy and paste them, but it wants me to do it from like a OneDrive or something. But um, I hope you had a good time. If you have, um, a suggestion for some another program that you'd like to see we're, we're trying to reschedule the um or to reimagine the one that we had to cancel yesterday about collaborating as an operations person across multiple um you know departments because i thought you know beth berlin would have been a great person oh thanks lisa for appreciating i appreciate you lisa and i appreciate everyone on this webinar right now um <laughs> but um you know i think we want to explore that operations role oh, she's back yes and i just want to say the really good news is there were no problems whatsoever with my furnace, the, oh, my furnace or my generator he was trying to find one then there we go <laughs> well, it's part of the service plan we lost power for four hours on monday night so it's like okay i don't want to be without a generator um all i wanted to say is take very good care drink lots of water do you have any questions i know we're at one o'clock but do you have any questions for me or yeah if you want to mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. I was just saying, yeah, I have questions for you, um, but I don't know of any right now. Um, <laughs> it's Kelly. You can always email me. It's my first name, dot Angelini at esc.edu if you have any questions. Um, that's, that's in our presentation, too. Yep. So I'll get that. Um, yeah, I think this is great. I think um, how many times a week should people be doing the stretch every day or these stretches at least? Yes. I mean, I mean, if you can do it at least every other day, it's really good, but especially for your fingers. And as I said, I just showed you a half hour. You could do individual exercises throughout the day. So if you have five minutes, do your hands. Then an hour later, you have another five minutes, do your neck. And that actually works out better because you're doing things throughout the day to keep yourself from scrunching over and really force yourself to sit up straight, six to eight right. inches from the back of your chair. That's gonna save your spine. And remember how people shrink as they get older? It's because of, it's because of slouching and True. because of compressing those vertebrae into the discs. So if you have lengthen and strengthen that spine, you'll keep your healthy spine, you'll keep your height. Perfect, okay. yeah. I can't get any shorter. Um, so that's good. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate um, you being here with us, Eileen, and 
it's always great to have you guide everyone. Um, so we had a good turnout. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now, but if anybody